Hello all you heroes, villains, and innocent bystanders. Welcome to another episode of An Angel and Her Unicorn comic book reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn, and with me today I have... Kelly the Dragon. She wishes she was a dragon. The dragon of pain in my butt, maybe. Hey! <laughs> be nice! Yeah. We'll be spoiling the books for the week, um, so if you haven't read your books, put your uh, video on pause, go read your books, and come back and see us, and bring your books with you so you can follow along. Eventually we'll have the times of all the books in the description, um, and then uh, if you get a chance, like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to have more people watch us and have a good conversation. Until then, I will let uh, the dragon... Dragon <laughs> I'll let the dragon take it over. Which one are you going to review first? And also, don't forget to put your bell notifications on. So you oh. no get notified when we post a new Look video. Look at her. Yeah, see? <laughs> Your YouTube watching is paying off. Good job. <laughs> High five. All right. So you're going to review... Teen Titans Go... Which there's two different chapters of this yes. one. And so you're going to read the first chapter right now, which is... Snow Bunny's Fool. And it is written by Amanda... <laughs> Di oh my gosh. Diebert? Diebert. <laughs> and the artist is Eric, Eric Owen. Owen. And so, the book starts out with Robin showing the Teen Titans the cabin that they're going to be staying in at their resort. Starfire In the is snow. In the That's snow. important. In the snow. And she's over the moon, and <laughs> Starfire is like, that sounds fun. She's happy. She And she asks Robin if... If this is a place with laser kittens, and 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 Star and Raven tells Starfire no, and they and Beast Boy's like, where is where is the TV for me to play the video games? And Robin screams at him. Robin is envisioning him helping Starfire, teaching him, teaching her how to ski. Which, drink hot chocolate and ski and be the ski instructor and snuggle on the fire. fire. So he's, he's hoping for like a, a kind of romantic weekend and everybody else has different different plans. And Raven, she doesn't, in her dimension, it's like fire hot <laughs> and she tried to go skiing and it melted yeah. in her snowman. So she doesn't like the snow. She doesn't think she's going to have a good time. And then they're... Cyborg and Beast Boy. Beast Boy always get hurt when they're trying to do, like, cool tricks while Raven's nailing it. Yeah, that I think that was pretty funny. When in, the, in the background, everybody's trying messing up and all this stuff's happening, but Raven's doing all these, like, cool tricks on the skis. and She's got this big ski group. and Yeah. And so they're, like, Starfire's like, why can't I just fly us up there? And he's like, no, that's part of the enjoyment. Robin doesn't want to be carried. <laughs> Well, he does, but he doesn't. And so, uh, Beast Boy runs into a kind of like rock with snow, and his like no trunk gets broken and like snot comes down, and like he, the bunny slope. Starfire got it confused with snow bunnies, like actual bunnies made out of snow. Well, uh, Robin calls her a snow bunny. He goes, pretty soon after this, she'll be a snow bunny, which like yeah. is somebody that likes the, that uh, skis a lot or is on the slopes a lot. It's a snow bunny. Yeah, but Starfire is takes from... it literally. Yeah, yeah, it takes it literally. <laughs> and Robin goes talk, kind of talks with her, and then goes inside, gets like some more clothes, warm clothes, and brings hot chocolate. And when he comes back, she's building literal snow bunnies. <laughs> out of bunnies, literally. Like hundreds of them, tiny little snow bunnies everywhere. <laughs> and Robin tries to pour it on him, and she gets mad. She blasts the cup. And eight hours later, there's like a bazillion of them. And then Cyborg and Beast Boy. They mm, broke a nuclear reactor. And the, the bunnies, sludge. yeah, the sludge makes the bunnies come alive. But and and Starfire's like, snow bunnies are alive, and he 
they try to fight them. She's hugging them. Most of them. All of them. And they get beat up. More fighting. And then they melt the bunnies. Yeah, they use... they use uh, Hot chocolate. Yeah, hot chocolate to melt them. And then... Uh, <laughs> Raven Raven's, uh, And she's like, what happened here? <laughs> and, sh- and her ski group is like, catch you later, Snow Queen. And <laughs> then she's like, bye. S- something. And then the end... <laughs> So she's, she was out having fun. She was out having fun, uh, like, doing all the cool tricks while everybody else was uh, <laughs> going through all this turmoil with the with the mutated snow bunnies. And then So then the second chapter. Two! <laughs> it is Teen Titans Go! The Friendly The Snowman. And the author and, author and illustrator, the author, Writer is Jay Tourist, and artist is I have no clue what Ag- Agnes is there <laughs> Agnes Karbowaski Karbowaska. We are sorry if we are mispronouncing them. So sorry. Like I, I really would love to get your name right, but unfortunately, I, I have no idea. So Cyborg and Beast Boy went to watch a movie. They're singing the song. Which is kind of like similar to like Frosty the Snowman, but it's Except theirs it's is not friendly the snowman. snowman. Which no. <laughs> no. And like they're talking about how they should build a friendly the snowman, but it doesn't Well, Cyborg wants to turn the refrigerator into, into a snow making machine. Yeah. <laughs> but. Which he does. Which he does, but Mr. Freeze comes out, which you should have just asked Mr. Freeze if he could just. Borrow his gun, stopped him, and took his gun, but they don't. They don't. Like, that's a much easier and quicker way. Why do you have to go through <laughs> buying all the supplies? This is probably why we're not on Teen Titans Go, right? No. We would have <laughs> taken the most easiest way possible <laughs> instead of choosing the most difficult way possible which is not as funny <laughs> yeah they <laughs> so they make they make the snow machine which yeah and then they come back they build it build the snowman man don't have buttons so it's Penny. canadian pennies <laughs> the beast boy ate the last carrot so he has a pickle for a nose they don't have wooden. They, they don't want to cut down a tree, so they just use a wooden spoon, which is definitely for one arm. For one arm, and then a spatula for the other arm. <laughs> the left arm is a wooden spoon, and the right arm is the spatula. And grab, try to go in Raven's room and find a spell to make him come alive. Uh, Snow, and they, like, earlier in the book, they are Snow, Snow Cone book friends, and now they're Snow Cone Ninja. Ninjas. So they can get the spell book, which they end up. And soon, they have read every book, and every spell, and sent Raven into a... Dimension parallel Phantom Zone. Phantom Zone turned Starfire into a stone. <laughs> Woo, rude, and Robin into a frog. And Beast was like, "Hey, after we fix all the other magic, maybe we can ask Starfire to kiss you to turn you maybe back in, because she is a princess." Right, because she is a princess. She's a space princess. And but then they see that. Wee woo, wee woo, crime alert. And it's. Uh, Mumbo has escaped prison. And Mumbo is a magic person. Yeah. And so, he has a hat. So they thought it would be a good idea to take his hat, bad idea, and stick it on the. Um, friendly. Friendly the snowman. He turns evil. Of course, because he's upset because he has a pickle for his nose. Pickle for his nose, a frozen heart, and he can't even clap because yeah. of the spoon in his left hand. 
for his left hand. And he goes to fight him. But it's super cold in the kitchen. But it's not, like, warm. It's kind of warm out out of the kitchen. So he melts. Yep. And then they get back. Fix. Uh, Raven undoes her. Undoes herself. Bad yep. grammar. And then fix Starfire on Robin. And they become. Pick. Puddle Pickle, pickle Pals. pals. <laughs> these boys like, hey, is there a five second rule for a puddle? <laughs> for the pickle. For the pickle. <laughs> they could eat the pickle. The end. It was a really fun book. If it will let me exit out, please. I'm not good at. So what did you think about? So what did you think about the book? It was a fun book. I liked it. I liked the art. Um, the art was really fun. It was really very Teen Titans Go. Starfire was impossible to read. <laughs> impossible. So I forced them to read anyways, and Kelly hates reading to begin with. I like reading, just I'm not good at it. <laughs> okay. She's she's okay reader, so she, she has difficulty. But I forced them to read to come on the show. So she has a hard time with Starfire the way she talks. Which I think is even funnier. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's twice as hard. Twice. Makes your life a little bit difficult. Because I have dyslexia, and it's already hard enough to read, but with, when the, some, grammar. with the bad grammar, it's <laughs> a bazillion times harder. Way, way harder. That's okay. It's practice. You got practice through it. Practice makes You did really sense. good, because that was the one that you actually read. Yeah. See? I'm, I'm really proud of you. All right. And I'm going to do... I rated oh. this book Five Sorry. out of five. Five out of five unicorn horns? That's pretty good. I would give it a four out of five, but I, I enjoyed it. I'm with you. It's a, it was a really cute read. The art's really good. It's a lot of fun. Definitely kids for your age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're a Teen Titans Go fan of the cartoon, you'll definitely yes. like the book. So. Or even if you're from the original t- Teen Titans. Yes, the original Teen Titans TV show, not the, not the comic book. Yeah, the yeah. TV show. All right, so I'm going to do mine? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do Guardians of the Galaxy. They relaunched it. They're now a new and number one after Infinity Wars. All that stuff that's happened, half the team is gone. Uh, Gamora is a bad guy. Drax is dead. Um, Rocket has quit. And so it's just now Star-Lord and Groot on the team. So they kind of do this new Guardians of the Galaxy where it's kind of bringing them, um, uh, kind of getting the team back together uh, per se, a certain team. And um, it starts off with a uh, Thanos was killed in the Infinity Wars, and so he's left behind this will saying that he's uh, incorporated his mind into somebody else's body, which they don't know who that is. Uh, by the way, who's the author? Oh, good call. <laughs> Let's do that. Let me find. I gotta find it. That's. A, it's probably gonna be in the back of the book. Yeah. Well. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for you to grill me. You've been grilled. So, the writer is Donnie Cates, and the artist is Jeff Shaw. So, there you go. Make you feel Thank better. You. Yes, Good job sticking right. to the script. Um, so, <laughs> with the, the will of Thanos, the Thanos is saying that he has his mind put in somebody else's body. Nobody knows really who it is. So, they're um, going to try to uh, form a team to kind of find out who it is and stop them before they cause more problems. Um, but in the process... Um, they uh, uh nice hair Groot I know Groot's chipping away Groot's, Groot's like chipping away at his body and he's making these really big spikes and this big giant mohawk um and then he ends up uh they find out nowhere the head the celestial head is gone and so then they um cut back to the team trying to figure out the Thanos so they're gonna they think the most likely suspect is Gamora so they're gonna try to find Gamora and and, and stop her um, but in the process, the uh, Nowhere Head shows up and takes over uh, Thanos' uh, ship. Um, and the Black Order shows up to take uh, take Thanos' body. So while they're doing that, they uh, they uh, use a black hole to get rid of everybody else. And so they can keep the, the Thanos' body. I thought, wasn't uh, Starlight's hair, wasn't he a brunette? Um, he's got a blondish, uh, blondish brown in the, in the, in the comic books. Why? Huh? I liked him better with... Well, it that. depends on who draws him or colors him. Sometimes he's a little bit darker headed. He's like me. His hair changes probably every six weeks. <laughs> every six weeks. 
So, <laughs> like a month and a half. Right. So every month and a half is something different, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he might uh, get a mohawk at one point. Ooh. Maybe some braids. Yeah. Afro. For sure. No, so Afro. So the Black Order creates this black hole, which uh, uh, gets rid of all these uh, people that have gathered to uh, figure out who Thanos' new body is. Um, and then they end up, uh, all of a sudden, Betteray Bill's hammer comes blasting through the black hole, and um, it's attached as a space ghost or space ghost rider's um, uh, uh, chain, and it f slams through um, Star Lord and Groot's ship. So Groot grabs a hold of the chain and kind of pulls through, pulls everybody through. Well, they pull Betteray Bill out, and will uh, he's pulling other people in tow with him and then they land on the uh the new ship uh the new ship of the uh, the guardians of the galaxy and so they end up with um uh being the new guardians of the galaxy so they got the new roster which is moon dragon uh space ghost rider star lord better a bill groot and uh fey Lavel, which is she's kind of a quasar character so that is the new guardians of the galaxy and it's going to be a six issue arc um, where they're gonna, I think they're gonna try to find out who Thanos is. So I'm curious Ooh. to see. Um, uh, Real good job on your hair. You look good. He does look really, really good. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that he talks though. He talks now. He talks normal. He doesn't say I am Groot. He just talks. That's boring. I don't disagree. I was like, I think one of the part, one of the part is, but he is kind of angry. He, he cusses a lot. Uh, I know. Like I, I liked him when he was. Uh, I don't know. I, I am Groot. Um, actually, it's a really good start to the book, uh, to the series. I'm kind of excited to see where they're going to go with it so and with the new team. how many unicorn horns, or how many was stopped? Well, let me talk about the artist first, yeah. Miss, uh, you know, Stickler for the, the script. So the <laughs> art, the art was really good. I thought it fit really well with the, um, the scope of the space. Um, I, they used a lot of characters. They did all the costuming was really good. Um, so I was really, I was really, uh, excited about the art. I think he, he was really... Jeff Shaw was uh, really talented in this book. I hope he stays with it for a long time, or you know, at least until the arc's in. So, because um, his his art works well with the with the the kind of scope that they're trying to do. Um, but I would give it probably a five out of five unicorn horns because I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy and I really like their new direction. I, I'm excited about the roster. Um, uh, it's kind of fun. So I'm looking forward to uh, yeah, to seeing what they're gonna do. Uh, now we are going to. Back to you, <laughs> Kelly, the dragon. We are now doing My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. Friendship is magic. Because I think we did My Little Pony a couple times ago, but it was um, a different one. It was the Nightmare Nights. Yes. So this one is the uh, um, main line, which is the Friendship is Magic. The artist. The is Ted Tim Anderson. Tim is the writer. Bear. And Kate is Kate Sharon, Sharon is the artist. Sharon. So it starts out with Fluttershy cleaning the chalkboard. Some of our students come in. They are having a bad main day, clearly. And Fluttershy has a big brother who is a hairstylist. A main stylist. Main stylist. And fixes all of their hairs, and he kind of spirals into his head, thinking that he's not a real hairstylist, that he can't do it. He's not good enough for it. So Fluttershy talks him into going to the uh, main con. He tries to ask Fluttershy to ask. Rainbow Dash to go, which I think he has a crush on Rainbow Dash. I totally agree with Kelly. I thought the same thing. I was like, ooh, he's got a crush on Rainbow Dash. Yeah. And he's like, whoa. On main con, he meet, he watched the show, the presentation, kind of, and somebody goes up, one of the main stylists, and they do somebody's hair, and you have three judges. Judged, yeah. That judge you. Which uh, you, they need that show for you because you love those reality shows. Yes. You would love please. to judge some mains. Judge some mains. <laughs> Chop off some heads. Yeah, exactly. If they're too bad, like they get their head chopped off. 
Ooh, that would be some serious things. Ooh, that you would be... get a be... bad main, whoosh, head's gone. Yeah. That's a reality show. Yeah, and the Rainbow Dash... Wait, what's Rainbow Dash? Nope, he meets that He meets that pixie cut, uh, the pixie cut lady. Okay, what's Fluttershy's brother's name? I forgot. Zephyr. Zephyr, 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 Zephyr. Yeah. Okay. Zephyr, Zephyr Breeze. Zephyr Breeze bumps into Pixie Cut. And they meet, they talk about his, how he spirals into his head. just, And he she has to run. And she goes, he, one of the Fluttershy students enters him into going on the stage and perf- doing hair. And he's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And he spirals out. And he wants to go get a hay burger, which is a hay that is in prison. Except probably not that good. <laughs> oh, you find that fascinating. <laughs> and she goes up on, Pixie Cut goes up on stage and does a really, really hard hairstyle for a, well. Yak. Yak. Yeah. It was the. It's right here somewhere. The Yak? The Yak Hurricane. The Yak Hurricane. There it is. The Yak Hurricane. And she presents it. Which is a cute little updo for a yak. If you ever, if you know any yaks, uh, the right. Yak Hurricane is apparently in this year. Very in for this year. And <laughs> uh, Fluttershy's butter brother. Zephyr. Zephyr. Yep. Uh, congratulates her, and she's, like, spiraling into her head, which he's like, wow, what jerk entered you into that, in that state, and he, she's like, I entered myself into it, and he's like, why, because I like it, because he, she She wanted to conquer fear of going up on stage, and so she, he does it, and he does it really well, and the judges give him compliments because he is just getting started. And they also give him constructive criticism, so they talk about how the ends aren't cut right, so it kind of goes to show you that even though you may not have been exactly perfect, that it was still a good job. You, yeah. And... She told him to, if you do spiral out into your head, have a friend or a parent or a family member. Just talk to them about how you're feeling or what's going on. It's okay to be scared, but you need to make sure that you're... Conquering your yeah. fears. Yeah, we talk about that a lot too, don't we? Yes. <laughs> because if you never try, you won't find something new that you might like. That's right. Even though you're scared of it. Exactly. And well said. And hey, burgers for everyone. <laughs> the end. So, what'd you think? I liked it. Pretty good message. Yeah, if it will let me exit out. Also, I got it. Talk about it. <laughs> Talk about spiraling out. Here we go. <laughs> me. <laughs> and I love the book. I thought they did great. I thought it went with this story. Even though you do spiral out, just talk to someone. Yeah, that's true. It had a good message. It was really cute characters. I think they had some really good cute good humor was funny. Mm-hmm. I liked all the little yak hairstyles was really cute. Yeah, the yak hairstyles. <laughs> um, I like the characters. They had to, they do really well with them. And the art, what do you think of the art? I liked it. It's very My Little Pony. Yeah. Goes really well with the with the even uh, like, cartoon. Yeah, even like when he would he when Pixie or Fluttershy's butter feather Fluttershy's brother <laughs> would spiral out, it still looked like it was a whimsical but still had a meaning. Yeah. That people do go through it. Yeah. They, a lot. they yeah, it's a scary subject, but they t- tackled it really well. Mm hmm. I agree. What what do what do you what would you rate it? A five out of five unicorn horns because it does show a m- good message, but it's like in a way that 
a kid wouldn't get like super terrified over it. Right, I think it, it was a nice age like, appropriate, whimsical way. But it, it's not like passing the line of a teen or an adult book. It's still like in that lower yeah. line. I totally agree with that. That is a great, great summary. <laughs> it is very much a a, a age appropriate use of dealing with problems. And um, I definitely love the art. I would agree with you. I think five out of five, especially if you're a My Little Pony fan, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you have a young kid, I think that would be a really great read. Or even, like I said, if you're just an older older kid and you want to uh, uh, be a My Little Pony fan, it's still a really fun book. Still some cute little humor. Even so. for an adult, it, if you really wanted to. I don't disagree. So let me look and see which ones I'm going to do. Because there was another number one that I wanted to do. I wanted to do Naomi number one. Ooh, Naomi. Yeah, so Naomi is a, like I said, number one book. And it is, um, they started a new line with the the DC um, uh, universe. They started a new line that's supposed to be more of a, for a younger kid. Or not younger kid, I think like more, I don't know, younger uh, characters. And so they ended up, um, this is their second book release. The first one was Young Justice. And so now we have um, Naomi. What? Don't forget the art and the writer. I know, but that's not it. That's that's for a different book. So I'll have to find it. But um, they have a... Um, uh, this book is kind of a... I don't know. It, it's not quite a superhero-y book. It's not quite a... Um, uh, a... Uh, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just a, it's just a fun read, I guess. Um, let's see. It, yes, it's written by Joshua Williamson and art was by Guillermo March and Rafa Sandoval. Yeah, two artists. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. The Naomi is by Bendis and Walker. That's who it is. That was the Batman one. That was, that was those artists. So it starts off with uh, all these kids are really shocked about the um, what this uh, the event is. You don't really know what the event is until the next page, the splash page. Um, and it is it is Brian Michael Bendis and David Walker are the writers, and Jamal Campbell is the artisan for the uh, uh, book. So there we go. It's there was their shout out. Splash page is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, so it's Superman fighting uh, Mongrel, and um, it's in a small town. But they say that they it's like it's happened so fast that he shows up, he fights, and then they're gone. So uh, everybody's talking about it in the town, and so they start googling it, trying to find out find out more about what happened, like how that happened. And they come to find out that it, nothing, nothing's on the internet, nothing's on the internet, nothing's on the uh, uh, their spaces. So they don't really know what to. Um, they're like, why isn't why why isn't anybody reporting about this event? And they're like, well, it's a small town. Probably not a lot of people are worried yeah. about it. Yeah. So, you know, there are probably all these kind of events happen, but... Um, like, not everybody, like... And not everything's going to get reported. So it's just like crime, you know? There's a lot of crime that happens, but maybe not every single crime is going to get reported. So this is kind of what this is about. So uh, there also is an underlying thing where Naomi is like, she's she wants to be... Uh, she's very interested in Superman, and you kind of find out that later she is adopted... And so there's something about Superman, since he's kind of been adopted by Earth, because he's an alien, that she kind of has a... Alien. She kind of feels like she might be special, too. So she doesn't know why, though. Um, but Superman comes back to town to kind of help clean up. So the kids are all excited that that was really neat. Um, Naomi goes and does therapy, and that's when they talk about her being adopted and, and possibly being special. Um, or she wants her... Naomi wants to be special, and so the therapist is like... Are you sure you don't identify with Superman and have Superman envy because you want to be special? And so it kind of does this this kind of um, uh, thing where... really good. Yeah, so the art's really neat. Um, yeah. So then they kind of... Uh, she's trying to keeps trying to find out. She goes around town and asking about all these events. And apparently there's some kind of event that happened a while back, but nobody knows when. And she finds the one guy who's in this garage, and he talks about... Uh, that she thinks that he might know some something. So her friend is trying to talk her out of it. Like, just come with me. Don't worry. You know, come stay the night. Let's just, you know, let's just have fun and get past this. 
and she wants to figure this out. So she feels like there's a mystery. So she talks to this guy, this mechanic, and he tells her that the last time that this something happened was when she uh, was her birthday, um, he, or the day she was adopted. So he's a buff. Yeah, he's a big old guy. He big guy. So I think she's connected to something for some reason, but I'm not for sure why they haven't revealed. So it's kind of an interesting start. Uh, like it is a number one issue, but um, I have to say that I you really don't get much. You get enough that I think maybe I will try to the next issue and see how that goes. Um, but it's not... I wanted more from the issue than what I got. However, the art is stunning and beautiful. It is so like magical looking like they do such great cinematography with the art the way that they uh, outline some of the characters or make the word bubbles flow and and they the splash pages are really neat so i they they have some really neat stuff with that book that i was really i i love with the art um i'd give it probably a three out of five unicorn horns didn't it wasn't super anything super special but it's not something that's really going to be um that really was like oh my gosh i can't wait till everybody reads this so i hope um I hope number two is going to be a little bit more exciting or at least give me a little bit more connection. So This is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I'm glad I'm done. You're just going to jump into your stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the writer is Brayden Moncar. Montecar. Montecar and Naomi Boyston. Uh, that, I think it's like Natasha. Bo yeah. Natasha Bustos. Bustos. Natasha Bustos. Bustos. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Okay, so this is Bad Dream Part 2, apparently. Mm hmm. And this is the first one you've read. This is the first time you've read. First ever... one, never read the first one. Yeah. This first, is your first Moon Girl. The Stranger. <laughs> and the. A. The devil dinosaur is battling this, like, watery-looking creature. Battle, she helps. Kind of find out it's this, uh, it's like a wind creature that's from her dreams that she pulled out into reality for somehow. Yeah. But she doesn't quite understand how. And. So they save the day. Her and the save dinosaur. Save the day. He's like, oh. Oh, God. I'm going to have to get you some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Pause the video. Let's go to Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, there you, we'll just have we'll have to call it in. We'll have to get it delivered. <laughs> and she's super tired, Moon Girl. And, and Kelly, <laughs> obviously. And her teacher is asking about the ways of sleep, the three ways of sleeping. And the teacher's like, "You don't know. Like you're the smartest girl in the school. How do you not know?" Mm-hmm. And finally, for once, the probably bully or annoying kid, finally, she's grateful for when he talks, which, shocker. But he does, like, a rude, talks We're, about our resting, our, our RBMs, like, uh, resting bowel movement or something from his taco dinner. <laughs> bowel movement? That, you can't... You can't arrest it. <laughs> it's not illegal. That's just how your body works. <laughs> but it's so yeah. gross. Nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah, but fair. <laughs> yeah, but still, your body can't... You can't arrest it. It's not illegal. You can't get charged. She's in the dreamland with Nightmare. No, this is the bad dream. Oh yeah, yeah. Nightmare shows up, but then she has a, her that little boy's name is Bad Dream. So Bad Dream and yeah. Nightmare talks to them, wakes up. She thinks. She thinks, like the bad dreams. All the superheroes. They're back in the classroom. And she's naked. Yeah. She well, like has a sh yeah, shirt. Yeah, she's in her just, underwear. And just a shirt, like a tank top. And they're all laughing at me, all laughing at you, and then ha I think she's actually woken up, or another bad dream. Yep. Woken up, and she's just in the exact same outfit, and uh, the rude, annoying kid, she's like, is like rude, and she like puts on like 
this outfit, a Sparrow Moon Girl outfit, and she and this taxi driver is like, "Hey kid, did you not get your nap? <laughs> Watch where you're going." Smacks, screech, crashes in. This guy pulls out and puts her. And she's like, he owes me a chocolate bar. And like, drive. Ends up being Sleepwalker yeah. is the, the cabbie. Yeah. Sleepwalker is like, and she's like, oh, of course the Sleepwalker. Since I, I'm dealing with nightmare and bad dreams. Uh, Girl, you're going to have nightmare <laughs> and bad dreams. And he drives her to where? Um. Oh, Doctor Strange. That's his name. Yeah. Doctor Strange. And he spills all the tea. The tea has been spilled. The tea has, there's tea spillage. <laughs> and it says, Booby continued. Ba ba ba. Ba da 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 da. So, what'd you think for your first Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur? It was good. Yeah, it was fun. It was interesting. It wasn't quite as. Um, I thought she would be more um, sciencey, and this was more Geeky. mystical. Yeah. Geeky. I don't, I, I don't like her costume, though. I think her costume is Mm-mm. just... She looks like a, a weird boxer. So. What do you think about the art? Good. Yeah? Get her outfit fixed. <laughs> yeah, she needs a better Toronto. outfit. Toronto. <laughs> yeah. I know, she, I know she's she's nine, but she needs a better... <laughs> Nine-year-olds dress better. See? Hi. <laughs> well, you are an, you're not an average nine-year-old. Oh. You are a weird one. So exactly. what do you think a um what do you what would you rate it? Uh like four out of five. It wasn't my favorite of the books that I did read. I uh, out of all of them, I would have to say either the either the Teen Titan was my favorite and then my little pony. Yeah. It was good. It was okay. I, I I think it's a middle of the road book. Three out of five unicorn horns for me. Um, I I agree. I, agree I think that. the other ones are a little bit more entertaining, funny, and this one I think is just it kind of. It's okay. Tip: Go to Walmart. Go to Target. <laughs> go to Old Navy. There are plenty of other stores where you can buy cool outfits. Cooler outfits. All right. So let me do my last book, and then we'll go through my pull list, and we'll finish Ooh, up. What okay. Is that? That is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ooh. So they relaunched it. They uh, got rid of... See, look how pretty her outfit is. Yeah, see, compared see. to that. Although she's a teenager versus a nine-year-old. But Still. I don't disagree. She don't probably know. went to Walmart and bought that. I don't even know about Walmart. She probably went... <laughs> Maybe it looks like she went. To... No, she looks like she went to the gym and tried to buy an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. She probably went to, like, Gucci or something like that. <laughs> That's a good quality outfit. So this book um, is a relaunch of the old series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They uh, eliminated the book or uh, discontinued it from um, uh, its old publisher and now it started off with Boom. Um, so this um. is... I'm just going to cover your mouth, though. <laughs> so uh, it starts off with her. She has a uh, She's at a dead-end job. She mm-hmm. works at a, a fast food restaurant. Yeah. Um, and then Willow and Xander, her buddies, or soon-to-be buddies... Um, they get attacked by a vampire, she stops them, and they kind of are like, well, what's going on with that? Um, it, the, uh, writer is Jordi Belair, and the, uh, it is drawn by Dan Mora. Sorry if we do not pronounce him correctly. I know, but I got pretty close on that one, I think. Yeah, good job. So then it goes to, he starts to go to school, and, oh, my bad. (laughs) So they went to school, they go to, uh, starts in school. And they see Buffy go into the library. Uh, Will and Xander follow her in there. They kind of spill the beans and they talk about like what the Slayer is and that she's a Slayer and fighting um. mystics. <laughs> um, and then it cuts to her um, talking to her mom and then she's out patrolling and she goes to fight this vampire. She, sta- she stakes him but he still survives because he has a special amulet on um, and he gets away. Then it goes shows him going to a store where Anya is a curator, and she um, melts him and actually takes the um, gem back. 
and is uh, she's going to end up sending it to somebody else to kind of use the gem because it's apparently a very valuable item. Buffy talks to Giles about having what what it is, and and then they cut to Willow, Xander, and Buffy kind of bonding and talking about how things, you know, she's a slayer, she wants to be normal, kind of setting that up. And then it ends with um, a vampire uh, stopping by Anya's shop to probably get the amulet. It's okay if you're weird. Everybody is here. She's weirder than most, though. I'm not. Mm -hmm. No. I wanted to wear a normal t-shirt, and this is what she put me in. Ah, ah, you, we literally just, you, we went to Chipotle, like, like, like a few minutes ago. We just went to Burlington. I see lies. No, we literally just went to Burlington. Anyways, the book was, it was okay. It's a, I, I don't understand why they're restarting it. I wish that they wanted to restart it with and, and redo the whole mythos. I wish they would have just done a different character and started Good it over with. Good job, artist, on the, the clothing. The Thank art you. is really uh, fun. Thank you. I, it's really uh, pretty, and everybody's kind of lean and young, and it's Beautiful. very vibrant. Um, the colors are amazing. Good uh, job. The cover is stunning. Um, but Dying. the story, uh, sadly, is just it's, it's just okay. It's an origin story. It's okay. So I'd give it probably a three out of five unicorn horns. I'm a huge Buffy about, fan, so I'll probably stick with it. What about the art? I told you about the art. I liked it. It was young How and many vibrant. unicorn horns would I'm you I'm working on there, but you won't let me list and stop. Shh. I'm going to fire you. I'm telling you, my cats are going to be my next my next. No, uh, they won't. No, you know, they won't. Thunder's no, going to be my next buddy. No. <laughs> He's going to read the next book. No. He'll tell us how the, much it tastes well. Yes. Literally, he'll be doing this the whole entire time. So, well, time. if you're a Buffy Even fan, on- you may want to give it a shot. I don't think it'll be as good for you as um, a, some of the other series in the past. Um, but you can try it out. And I'm interested to see what other Buffy fans say. Um, but I really didn't find it that it, it was a, just the middle of the road. Three out of five unicorn horns. I hope that it gets better um, and that they take it somewhere that's a little bit different. than Because it seems like it's just they move people around a couple places, but they're kind of following the same formula, which is... I don't understand why you're watching. I agree. I agree. I don't need a retelling. So let me go through my pull Pull list list. really quick, and then we will um, end the show. Sound like a plan? Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you pull up my list online while I go through these. So Avengers number 13. Um, It actually was a really good story, but I don't feel like it fits into uh, the line. It, they keep regressing back to these old Avengers. I wish they would just do a mini series with it and Here. get it out of the way because this one actually is not. Um, it just breaks up the story. They haven't done anything. It's thirteen issues and they've had one villain, so I'm I'm just ready for that one to be over with. Uh, but that that actual comic book was probably pretty good. Four out of five unicorn horns. Um, die die die. It was number seven. Gruesome, I gruesome, gruesome. love this book. It is so grotesque and violent and horrible and it's just the art is so much fun and the book is actually really a lot of like it's just tongue-in-cheek so so cheesy and so like over the top i just love it um five out of five unicorn horns it's one of my favorite ones us that's out there so far a bazillion yeah it's pretty gruesome and gross um justice league i'm just number 16 it's okay Two out of five unicorn horns of kind of over the Justice League. They're just not going nowhere with it. That story is just... What a question. I want it to die. Have you ever, like, gave a book, like, zero unicorn horns? Not yet. Like? Not yet. Hmm. But I like comic books. Maybe one day. Maybe. Uh, Wildstorm number 19, just continuing on the story. It seems like things are getting ready to um, amp up. But I feel like uh, stop- 19 issues, they should be somewhere. They should be in the middle of, of, of like the big thing and they're not so i'm curious to see why they're dragging it out they've only got a couple more issues left so but i still liked it four out of five unicorn horns i still enjoy it the retelling it's kind of fun um star wars same thing i feel like this line's been this arc has been really long and i just need to be over with their arcs have been they they go from having these really tiny short arcs and then they went to these really really long arcs that are just not necessary uh they need to find a good length maybe three or four issues instead of like five or six um but it's okay i'd say i I, but i like star wars so but this one uh, this issue particular really nothing really happens they kind of chase each other and they're you know 
it's more filler almost. So three out of five unicorn horns. And then Uncanny X Men. <laughs> They reveal that they brought back Cyclops. <laughs> Cyclops is back. Um, so they uh, reveal back, how... Back, back again. Cyclops back. back. Tell some men. In. So, uh... <laughs> so they, um, uh, are, uh, bringing him back, but they explain how they brought him back. So that's what happens in this issue. Um, uh, in this annual, so we'll see how that gonna, is going to play into the future Uncanny X Men issues since and they all disappeared. IPad. Um, let's see. I read Freedom Fighters number two. Um, Ooh. it was actually kind of a good continuation. I'd say three out of five unicorn horns. Um, not quite at four. It's kind of still a little. Still a little boring. Yeah, yeah. I just I'm I don't know. Maybe um if we'll see. I'm gonna stick with it though. I love the art. The art was really good. Um, it was okay. So middle of the road. I'll, I'll check out the next one. Um, Axiom Man by Hannah Comics. I don't. It was. It was boring. Yeah. I mean, like the art was really fun. It was kind of whimsical. It was kind of interesting idea. But I just. It was almost a little too cartoony. But it wasn't for young kids. So I really didn't know where to put it. Um, so I'd say two out of five unicorn horns. Um, I probably won't pick up the next issue. Uh, Teen Titans number 26 was actually really good. Um, I'm kind of getting back into the Teen Titans. I really like these characters that they have. Um, this deals with uh, the, some of the fallout, I guess, from the previous issues, which I haven't read, so I'm going to have to go back and catch up. Um, but I, I really like the characters they're doing with Damien and uh, the Red Arrow and uh, Lobo's, uh, the, the female Lobo. It was kind of fun. So I give this one kind of a four out of five unicorn runs. I'm kind of excited to go back and read and catch back up. Uh, Shazam number two, um, it was pretty good. I I like I like the idea that they're going with the different magical lands, and they're going to try to figure out how to go through these magical lands. So Hi. it's a continuation, but nothing really exciting has happened yet. They just kind of a, they're still establishing story, so I'm ready for it to be like get into the stuff, get into the action. Um, so three out of five unicorn horns. Exo Sisters is really fun. If you're not reading that, that's a really fun book. I enjoy that. Um, it's a little bit not age appropriate, but it's still uh, but it a lot of fun. It looks like a good book. Yeah, it does, but For it's not. Older kids. Maybe Raylan, yeah, maybe Raylan would read it and, and enjoy it, but not, not for you. But I would give that a four out of five, almost a five out of five unicorn horns. I really like it. The art's fun. The the subject matter is kind of fun. Um, so yeah. All right, let's spin the show before you fall asleep. Yes, please. So <laughs> thanks for listening. Um, if you have any books that we haven't read um, or that I'm not reading, please let me know. There's always I always love reading new stuff. Um, and if you get a chance, please give us a comment if you agree with us. Or if you don't agree with us, please let us know. We'd love to have a discussion. That's what I kind of created this channel for. Um, me and Jenny started this channel for, was to create a discussion about comic books. Um, something that we all we love very much. And uh, I'm really happy to, to get my, my family and friends involved in my uh, chaos and nerddom. <laughs> so um, if you get a chance, uh, like and share and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. And turn on your bell notifications so you get notified when we post new videos. Or just subscribe. Yeah. Either one works. Kelly wants more subscribers. We're up to 21. We're super excited about that. Yay! I know, right? Last time was 16. I'm super excited. So until then, we hope your pull list is full. So, bye! bye.